Hi everyone, it's me Priyanka and today Papa's has asked me to paint a portrait of myself because I'm so pretty! <laughs> the portrait that I'm going to be painting today is actually a portrait of myself so that you can remember how iconic I am. I'm really bad at drawing though. It's not gonna be good. It's not gonna be good. Well, let's just dip into the brown here. I, I am a Bollywood princess. You know, the last time I was at my happiest is right now. Honestly, I feel like being in the UK is a time where I'm at my happiest because people think I'm famous here. <laughs> and they ask me for my autograph and shit. And I'm like, wait. <laughs> What? Should I be speaking in a British accent? Because it's British. You know, I'm really hot, pay. And I feel, I think that, I think, I think that happiness is what you make it if you, if you think what I say. Harry Potter. I would say seeing your hard work pay off is what happiness is to me. Because you work so hard and you don't text people back sometimes and you're busy and people hate you for it. And then you, you know, you get to perform on these big stages and you're like, wow, like, all that sacrifice that I, I made to make my dreams come true is happiness. Do you agree, camera guys? The camera guys are hot, it's gonna turn into an orgy. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, my parents were like really, really cool. They're, they're still alive, so they are cool, sorry. They were like really open for me to just do whatever I wanted to. My mom was very adamant on, on making sure that like, just go do whatever you want as long as it ma makes you happy. Like you, you're, you're, you live a happier life if you go follow your dreams. So when I said that I wanted to be a doctor and then a dentist, and then what else did I want to be? A whore. And that's what I went with actually. <laughs> when I said I wanted to be a, a, a TV host, my mom was like, yeah, go for it. So then I went to school to be a TV. So I think they just expected that I was going to be a star, which is why they're so supportive now. Is this therapy? <laughs> I have a lot of best friends, but one best friend in particular, who's in the room right now, who's also my lover boy, my afterglow. That's who I wrote afterglow about. He's my tattoo artist. And I went in because I wanted a cover up tattoo, you see. And he, he repaired my broken heart. Stop crying. You know what? I always say, like, people are, are afraid of their age, but I'm very, like, no, the older I get, the better I'm getting at everything in my life. Like, when I was young, I was, like, what? Ten years ago, I wasn't even out of the closet. I had a girlfriend. Like, I had sex with women. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's not good, it's not good, it's not good. <laughs> but I did, and there, you know what's crazy about all my girlfriends? Is they're all married now with kids and they're all my kids <laughs> i think my best personality no i know i know my best personality trait is that i don't take myself too seriously i know that for a fact because honestly like i work so hard but sometimes did you know the week after i won canada's drag race i performed in a cafeteria to 20 girls big winner big star hundred thousand dollars tax free in the bank performing for 20 girls who didn't even watch Candace Drag Race. I have the ability to make everyone feel like they're my best friend. Someone told me that when I was taking improv classes. But my mom taught me how to be that way. My mom was always like, always smile at strangers. It makes them feel very happy. I'm like, okay, mom. And now whenever I smile to a stranger, we make out. This is good. Like, I'm actually kind of shocked. I thought it was going to be hot dog shit. This is good. It looks better than Jimbo's makeup. Drag queens are scary. Like, you know when you sit at it in, the, in, in the audience at a drag show, and then she calls you out, and then you're like, it's supposed to be your safe space, but it makes you feel like kind of embarrassed, because you're like, oh no, like the drag queen called me out, like, I don't want attention for being here, it's hard enough to be like, at a gay bar, you know? But I draw my fake nose on my real nose on it. Like, you know how like, as a drag queen you draw this line? Like, what do you draw? Oh, I can just do like this one line, like very abstract. Oh, that looks like a snowman. A lot of people in the meet and greets now are like, oh, you're nice. I was like, what, what, are, how are these other Drag Race girls treating you, you know? So I would say being a Drag Race girl, they expect you to have a little bit of an ego after, but I don't know, whatever, I still poo and pee. <laughs> Nothing's changed. <laughs> I actually have to poo right now. I'm just joking. <laughs> That's so gross. 
a chance encounter. I would say having a drag queen perform at my birthday party and then that same one look at me and be like, you should start drag. And me being like, yeah, you're right, I should start drag. And then actually starting drag and then winning Canada's Drag Race. Like, you know what I mean? Like if it wasn't for her, I would just be sitting at home, alone, crying, because no one wants me, is what I still do now. <laughs> the first drag race girl I ever saw though, which is always fun to talk about, was, um, what's her name? I think it was Alaska, actually. But I saw Shangela perform. And this is just when I decided that I want to start drag. And I was like, I want to do what she's doing. Because she's up there turning the f***ing party. And I was hosting kids TV at the time, like talking about SpongeBob SquarePants, like who cares? And she was like making all these gay people feel like they're like the ones. And I was like, I want to be her. I have brown eyes, wow, those are really brown eyes in there. Didn't know that. One of the drag art artists that I admire the most is probably Trixie Mattel. She was nice. I was I was the, the meet and greet fan. I was like, you're actually nice. I like that Trixie has so much of a hustle to her and that she just literally is just like project after project after project. Like I think that's really, really cool. And then I like I like the like the Alyssa Edwards, of course. I'm obsessed with her. And I hate that that bitch calls me Paranka. Drag changed my life in so many different ways. Like it's just, I never actually ever thought that I would be this happy. Not that I thought that I was gonna be miserable, but like, I'm sitting here painting a portrait of myself with a wig on. Like, this is my life? There's nothing like being on a stage and watching everybody escape their issues and their problems while you're up there just dancing the house down. You're sweaty, you smell really bad, but no one knows. And they're watching you being like, wow, you, this, is, this is the best moment of my life right, right now. And being able to give that to people that's what makes me feel like a winner, baby. Hmm. Beyonce. Beyonce. I just love her. And I love that she isn't afraid to like, you know, teamwork makes the dream work. And she gives people their credit and she changed, she changed the world. She's an icon. I love her, honestly. People hate, hate on her, I don't know why. I'm just obsessed with girl groups, honestly. Little Mix. Like, Jade follows me on Instagram. And Leanne does too. Perry doesn't give a fuck about me. But the other two, and they DM me. I guess it fucks. I fact cool. Like, hey Jade. Like, Little Mix? Are you fucks? You know what I mean? Like, what would you do if Little Mix was in your DMs? Exactly. Like, Little Mix. The first song I ever fell in love with was Wannabe by the Spice Girls. You know what? I remember waiting on, like, because we had to wait for music videos to come on, right? You couldn't YouTube them. And I would be, and I was grounded. Cause I was, you know I was being a little bitch to my mom. You know I was being so rude. You know I was, right? I would say Wanna Be by the Spice Girls, is that? You know it's a good song? Bitch I'm Busy by Priyanka. <laughs> it really like, it, it's earth shattering that one. I'm kind of like at my goals right now. Like I'm touring the music. I have dancers. I have really iconic music videos. And I charted. Like I charted in the UK, I charted in the US, I charted in Canada, and I was like, I was just sobbing. Like I was like, I just didn't expect this to happen. Do I drop my shoulders? Is that a self-portrait too? I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna use the big, the big, the big boy. She got big shoulders. <laughs> the best piece of advice I've ever been given is, if it doesn't fit, push it in. Why did I say that? You understand? Like we're just here trying to have a good time. The best piece of advice, hmm. Do to people what you want back. I would say like that is, that is, I know it's like a, a very simple thing. Is that bad advice or is that good advice? What do you think? I think the hardest lessons to learn when you're old, like me, is that like people will really support you and really help your dreams come true, but people will also try to make you feel bad for your success. And that's when it gets a little f***ed up. I think sometimes when people are around a successful person, it makes them hold up a mirror to what they're not doing, and then it brings up a lot of insecurities and they take it out on the artist. Oh, that's drama. That's drama, right? That's good drama. The way that you come out of a broken heart is you write five iconic pop songs, block them on Twitter, but <laughs> make sure that they know that all the songs are about them. I mean, okay, in all honesty, the best way of getting over a broken heart is by letting yourself be sad about the broken heart that you have. 
Like, I think a lot of people like want to like, oh, well, no, it's fine. Everything is fine. It's like, no, it's not fine. I'm heartbroken. I wanted to be with that person and now I'm not going to be with them. And I have to mourn the loss of that person I thought I was going to be with. Like, I think it's fine to be sad. Don't you think? This is really f***ing good. Holy shit. If you have regrets, I would say to you, why did you do it in the first place? One time I pushed a girl off stage and she almost died. Well, like, why would she come on stage during my Beyonce mega mix? Honestly, sometimes we do some really messed up things and we hate ourselves for them and it's sad, but we're human. Like, what do you want me to do? Anyways, rest in peace. No, I'm kidding, she's still alive. <laughs> this is so good. Like, this is so good. I am very happy with this painting. This is the best thing I've ever drawn in my life. The artist that I channeled for this piece is Beethoven. Is Beethoven a painter? Okay, ready? You're not ready for this. Voila. Shocking. Shocking. Because you weren't, I wasn't expecting it to be good. This is stunning. That is bitch in the game. It's me. <laughs> this is so good. Anyways, thank you. Thank you for having me. Should I sign it? Should I autograph it? This is the best day of my life. Wow. This is so good. Like, you're shocked. Are you shocked? Are you shocked? Wow. Well, I thought I was going to come here and just like f around, but I tried in different ways. And this is like, <laughs> like, I just keep switching careers. Kids TV host, drag queen, painter, Beethoven. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see more masterpieces, make sure you subscribe to Pop Buzz. Pop, pop.